The withdrawal of invitation of Governor El Rafai to the NBA conference might be breeding two factions in the association due to clashing opinions. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladendi. Welcome back, and this is Plots Politics. We are looking at the issue that is still at the front burner, the withdrawal of invitation of the Kaduna State Governor, Malam Nasir Aurufai, to the Nigerian Bar Association is still a front burner issue. The governor had been scheduled to participate in a panel discussion at the NBA conference, but his inclusion had sparked controversy among lawyers who pushed for his removal as a participant. In support of the governor, former Emir of Kanu, Muhammadu Senussi, has faulted the decision of the NBA, describing it as a sad, a sad for the freedom of speech in Nigeria. Also, the Kaduna branch of the Muslim Lawyers Association of Nigeria has threatened to boycott the conference. Our question today is simple. Was it right for the NBA to take this decision? Joining us to throw more light on this is Garuba Abubakar, who is the chairman of NBA Duse in Jigawa. Good evening, Mr. Abubakar. Yeah, good evening, sir. Yeah, I think the latest is uh, your branch threatening boycott, or what exactly is your branch saying relating to the invitation being extended to uh, the governor of Cardinal State, which NBA later withdrew? Yes. Talk to us. What is your branch saying about it? Yeah, in, uh, essentially, the position of our branch is that uh, uh, prayer here has not been accorded to Malam Nasir Erufai, the executive governor of uh, Kaduna State, when the neck of the Nigerian Bar Association decided at the meeting on the 20th of uh, August 2020 that uh, he is uh, disinvited. And uh, uh, it's not about uh, personality of man, Nasu Erufai. It's not about uh, religion. It's not about tribe. No, it's a question of uh, right to fair hearing. Yeah, you can't uh, decide on any matter that uh, concerns somebody without he be given an opportunity to be heard and to defend himself on the allegation raised against him. So as a branch, we feel that uh, this uh, contriving the right to pay hearing as guaranteed by the Constitution and uh, other uh, legal instruments. And uh, as lawyers, we have to set uh, precedent. We lay precedent, other people follow. And uh, we feel that uh, in that situation, uh, one cannot say that fair uh, hearing has been accorded to the governor. Okay, so, Mr. Mr. Bubaka, let me, let me interject yes. you so that you can throw more light. Uh, I want to believe that, uh, <laughs> this is my opinion, I want to believe that you're being mindful of your words, you're being, some would even accuse you of being economical with the state of your mind. It appears that this has already taken a religious and ethnic coloration, looking at the site of branches that are pulling out of the MBA. Can you just say it? Because we've heard comments like, Wike is still being, uh, uh, Governor Wike is still going to speak, uh, OBJ is still going to speak. Why do you have to remove a man citing the issue of what is happening in Southern Kaduna. So is it not okay to put it in proper perspective of what your grouse is exactly? No, uh, from our own part, there is nothing like uh, uh, religion or uh, sectional matter, even though you cannot deprive somebody from holding contrary opinion. 
Okay. Uh, another case of it is that uh, we have the belief that if complaints are to be adjudged on their first value, there are some other invitees who are also not free from some allegations violation of human rights, uh, yet invitation is still intact. So that is why we believe that, uh, or rather we opine that uh, there, there is no fair hearing option. And, uh, okay. This is just an opinion. You can't deny somebody from holding contrary opinion. But uh, on part Okay, Mr. Bubaka, I, I, I just hope the network will be, will, will really will be, will be fair to Rawls. Uh, but basically, I was just going to ask again, let's look at the merit of whatever it is, whether it, it has merit or not merit. They have come out to say that uh, we invited you and we're withdrawing our invitation. Why should this be subjected to fair airing? Why should it be subjected to... Uh, whether he should be allowed to come and speak or not. Okay, let, let, me, let me quickly play this sound bite and then when we'll come back, we'll talk some more. Please, don't go anywhere. Well, um, <laughs> let, let me say that I don't think it was, by the, it was by a certain group within the NBA because I'm aware that uh, the vast majority of NBA members do not agree uh, with those things. Uh, you know, if you have an opinion, people will either agree with you or disagree with you. But a man who has an opinion that can be agreed with or disagreed with is always better than a man who has no opinion at all. Uh, Nasser has always had opinions. He knows what his position is on things. He says that position very clearly. Uh, people will like it, some people will not like it. And that's what people call controversial. But being controversial is actually having an opinion. If you don't want to be, con to be controversial, you just um, behave like um, these Teflons, flexible you, you know, just flow with the wind and nobody knows where you stand. Then you, you will not have any friends, you will not have any enemies, or everybody will be your friend uh, or enemy, um, as the case may be. Um, I think the case of, um, uh, I mean, the case of the crisis in Kaduna, first of all, is something that predates this government. It's been on for a long time. And the governor is doing something about it for the first time in a long time. There are people who, and the North as a whole, um, suffers because we have people who profit from division. We have divided ourselves against each other, whether it is ethnicity or religion. And I think when you have someone who says, I'm simply going to stand for justice, for the rights of human beings, and do what is right, um, some people who are not used to things being done in that way are going to object. Um, I'm sure that um, His Excellency knows that with almost every issue, there will be people who will object. Uh, but what is important is um, that it is very clear what he has done. I read the allegations, and there were, no, there were no allegations. I read the petition. I was looking for the specific allegation. You say somebody does not respect the rule of law. What is the specific instance of disrespect for the rule of law? You say somebody has mishandled a crisis. What is the specific manner in which you mishandled the crisis? These, anybody can say anything. You know, I can say you're a corrupt person. What does that mean? It means nothing. And, um, and to be honest, um, I do not want to join issues. I think we have already heard um, the view of Nigerians and the response. Uh, and you know, I'm a, I spoke to Konya Jai. Uh, who was the chairman of the technical committee, uh, he confirmed to me that he was the one who invited His Excellency to come and speak. He was the one who invited him to speak at the MBA meeting. He did not ask himself to speak. 
and um, the technical committee itself did not support any call to disinvite him. Um, now that decision has come out. You, you know, if you're going to take action on people based on allegations, the president of the NBA himself has allegations against him that have not been proven. But nobody has told, has said anything about him because um, this is a matter that's before a court of law and uh, people will wait for the court to decide. Everybody has uh, a right uh, to fair hearing. And more important for me, if you feel that the governor of Kaduna State is not doing well, you should invite him to your conference and ask him. And let him explain what he is doing. And tell him what you think he is doing wrong. You will learn something from him. He will learn something from you. Um, disinviting him is not the path of people who actually want progress. Because if you disagree with someone, having him in your hall where you can tell him your view is the best way. And he can defend himself. And if uh, there are things that he needs to improve, he will take them on board. And if there are things that you don't know that he's doing, you can be better informed. That is, I think, the best way uh, to handle uh, issues like this. Um, but again, um, I have seen the response from different branches of MBA. I, I hope that this matter will not be turned into a religious and ethnic matter. It should be a matter of principle that no one uh, should, uh, and I really think it is their loss because um, if he was there, um, he would add value to the conference and they would also learn something about what he's doing and he can also uh, take something. And I hope that if they invite him, uh, or if they change their mind, he will consider. But the, it is sad, uh, and, and I think this is a matter that will continue to unfold, but it's sad for the MPA itself, and it's sad for uh, freedom of speech, and, um, and also uh, a, a fair hearing. I have known Nasser since we were 16, 17. Uh, he's a nationalist. Anybody who knows him, he has never, ever, ever been associated with any ethnic or religious bigotry. Uh, all our friends are Nigerians. Everybody who knows uh, us, people don't even think of us as northerners or because, I mean, really, we're just Nigerians. And um, anybody who knows him will tell you uh, that he's just a Nigerian. Look at the people that he works with. That was um, the former Emir of Kano, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, giving his thought on this issue. Uh, it's unfortunate that we are not able to reconnect with the chairman of the NBA in Dese, uh, Jigawa, to talk more on this issue. Probably Sanusi has come to his aid to add more points on what exactly the branch is saying. He has raised quite a lot of issues. And trust me, we'll be looking at that in our next segment. So to our viewers, let's just go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll be talking more on this issue. Let's hear what MBA stands for and let's see whether they will throw more light on it. Please don't go anywhere.